Hey everyone, so this is going to be a bit of a packed video because we're going to take a look at setting up uh, hand snapping locations inside of the GDXR VR template as well as setting up custom hand animations although I might do that as another video, I haven't decided yet. So what I've got in here is someone on the Patreon was talking about having a sliding object so I imagine there's this like a cylinder that you could slide up and down and it could do something. So what I've done is I've created a blueprint to do that. If I can find it, why are you not there? There we are. And we've got this BP slider blueprint and all it is if we open it up is a spline with a static mesh and that static mesh has a grab component. And it says when we grab the object using the grab component, we update the timer to basically have the position move along a spline from zero to one. And that's the spline points. And then when we release it, it stops moving. So quite a simple setup. But what we need to do is if you've used the grab component in other versions, you'll know that you've got to you sign it to the mesh. So in this case, where we've got the grab component on the static mesh. That's what we're going to grab. But what we'll notice is we've got grab type set to none. So I could probably do with renaming this, but what this does is in our grab component, I have it set up. So uh, let's take a look. So it'll be easier to explain. Is in the non channel from our try grab, all we do is we say we're holding it. That's literally all we do, and that allows our first hand to go through the grab component. So let's say we've got one of these actors that is technically stationary. We're not going to pick up. We're not going to move it around the level, but we want to grab it and we want to interact with it. So what you do is you give it the grab component and then you give it the grab type none. So it's technically a grabbing, but we're interacting with it. And then everything else can be as it is. Hold item. You don't need to worry about these. As long as grab type is none, we're good to go. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up a hand snapping so our controllers actually, or our scale mesh hands, attach to that object. So in this case, it's going to be our cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our static mesh. I'm going to add child. We'll do child actor. And in this child, we want to select child actor class, snap, so hand snap. And you'll see here that we get this outline of our hands which we can then move around and position. Um, this will depend on the location of it in the real world as well. So we might have to rotate this around. I'm just gonna position it a bit better. And then in the level, what we can do is we can drag in the interactable slider and then position it so the handle will be in the right rotation. Like so. So we can see our hand goes there. So what's happening now is we've got a rough mesh and it shows exactly where our hands are going to be, but we have no way of telling that blueprint what we're going to be doing. So if we take a look into one of the existing blueprints that we have, let's say we take the dial. So the radial one's probably the best one because we're going to have two different hands. So crank wheel, it looks a lot more complicated than it is, but really all you need is this section here. So it's as easy as taking our motion controller source and copying both of these and taking it to our slider. V. So what we're doing is we're saying on grab, we're going to get our motion controller, find out if we're left or right handed, and then we'll pass through to the branch. So what that'll do is it'll take our child actor, which we haven't got set up right now, and it'll choose whether our motion control is left-handed or right-handed. If you only have one hand mesh, and it's only going to be in one location, then you can just keep that as it is. But let's say we're going to have a second one, so we'll rename this to um, snap and right, or that would probably be left. Whereabouts is our spline? Yeah, snap hand right. And then we can duplicate this, and we can do snap hand left, and in child actor default, we've got is left hand, we can set to true. That will invert it for us. So we can change the position for that one now. I've got a feeling these hands might be upside down. 
Well, we can pop these in. We'll get an error because we compile it. So snap hand left. If left is true, we're going to set that top snap hand. And if snap hand right, or if it's false, then it's going to go to right. So now we we'll fit file and save. We can jump in. And that is because I didn't connect our Skelmish hand. So Skelmish hand goes straight through to the grab component. <laughs> it's been a long day. Let's do that. Compile some now. Essentially what we do is our player feeds through our Skelmish hands to our interactable actor. And from there, we tell them to move to a specific location. So if I grab it, you can see that we move up and down and our hand is actually snapped to it, which is quite nice. And we can do the same thing with our right. So it's kind of rotating the way they are. And then you would just change the angle of those rotations. So it gives us a lot more control over it. So what I've done is I repositioned them as well, but we still got to start my left and right. And I wanted to point out the is left hand. The blueprint doesn't really care about this. The is left hand is purely for this visual. So you can see the mesh invert. That's all it is. But literally that's all that does. It's all predicted by the blueprint itself. So what I've done is I've repositioned them so the blueprint is facing straight on. So when we go up to it, you'll see that we can go up, we can grab it. Our right hand goes to the right hand side of it. Then our left snaps to the left. And we can switch between those as they are. And you'll see that we've still got our actual interactions and animations. So we're going to set those up now. So, so what we've got is inside of the child actors for the snap hands, we have a custom animation blend space. By default, the hand mesh to display is set to the climbing static pose. So this is a static mesh render of our animated hands. So because the custom animation blend space is default, it's going to default to the actual templates default hand animations, which is part of the player. So what we want to do is we want to find our hands. So, so let's say we want to add a new custom hand animation to this to fit more nicely with what we've got. It is a little bit touch and go. So you've got to kind of eyeball it a little, but if you would export these animations out into a separate uh, program like 3ds Max or Maya, you could then do much more accurate animations. So I'm going to show you how to do it inside of Unreal. So I'm going to go for the animation. So, animation sequence mannequins XR ladder because that's closer to the animation that we want for this because it's just going to grip. So I'm going to open this up and you'll see on the left we have our skeleton tree and if we drop down we can do show all bones and what we want to do is we want to take these bones that we've got in our hand and we're going to open these up slightly to be more accurate to what we imagine the sphere or grabbing the sphere will be like. So the more you do this, the more practice you'll get at it. So we're just going to go through and do it with all of these. It can be a little bit of a tedious process. But because we don't need to do full animations and have them set up for this. So when we trigger something, we just got to have the animation fit. We can do it this way. And because we're also mirroring the hand, we only need to do it once. So. Let's try that. That looks like it might be wide enough. So what we do is we go to create asset. Now that we've done this, we create, create animation. And then we can do uh, current pose. So we do current pose. We see we're going to do a new sequence. So we go to mannequin animations and then our name of convention is animation sequence uh, animation sequence underscore mannequins XR underscore um, slider. So we hit OK and then if we go back to our animations, you see that we keep our old one that we just modified. But we created a brand new one, which is an animation sequence, and it's now called Slider. 
So if we go to our slider blueprint, you can see that what we want is an animation, a custom anim blend space. We don't have one of these, we just made an animation sequence. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new blend space. So animation and then blend space. We wanna choose our and uh, SK Mannequins XR. We could actually just duplicate one of these ones below. That would pro actually, that might be the easiest way to show you do, how to do this. So if we take Climbing Ladder, we're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna go blend space underscore uh, slider. And then if we open this up, blend space slider, it's already set up. So we've got asset details. And because we're not going to do anything on trigger press, we're not taking any inputs for this animation. We can delete those and we can bring in our slider. And we want to place it right at the beginning here and set it to zero, zero, oh, zero point five, four, 0.5, 4, none. Where did we go? There we go. Zero, 0.50. So save. And then now back in our slider, we can go to custom animation blend space and we can choose our new blend space from here. Do compile and then play. Go over. You can see that our hand actually snaps to that position and it kind of works pretty well, to be honest. So we can actually snap those and have custom hand animations that way. So hopefully that helps you get set up and started on kind of working with custom hands, the hand snapping system and everything else. Um, if you've got any questions, make sure to head to the Discord. There's a, a GDXR Ultimate channel there, which is open to everyone. So if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them and they'll be able to drop in and help you out. Cool. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.